Factsverse presents… This man said he traveled to the year 2749 and he made some disturbing claims about the future. Before we get into our video, jump down to the comments and let us know if you believe time travel really is possible. If so, how would you use it? Where would you go? What would you do? Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos. Ever since the H.G. Wells novel The Time Machine was released, people have started wondering if time travel is possible. The book is about a Victorian inventor's journey in time to the 802nd century. While many people see time travel as nothing but science fiction stories, some believe it really could happen someday. The late Stephen Hawking believed that one day man could travel through time. Some people claim that time travel journeys have already happened. Al Bialik was known as an unusual child. He was born in 1927, and he was brilliant. He could recite things that he just read word for word, which earned him the nickname Walking Encyclopedia. His ability to remember and understand was incredible. He claimed to have been able to have overheard a conversation when he was nine months old, and he says that he understood the whole conversation. Al lived a relatively normal life until he saw the 1984 film The Philadelphia Experiment. He didn't see it when it was first released. It wasn't until 1988 that he saw the movie. In the film, a group of sailors was on the deck of the USS Eldridge during World War II. The U.S. Navy wanted to hide their ships and they thought that they had a way to do it. In the movie, the sailors on board the vessel disappeared and were sent back in time. After seeing the film, Al felt something strangely familiar. He felt like he was suppressing something. He tried a variety of New Age treatments and many long, buried memories came back to him. When Al's memories came back to him, he discovered that he was born Edward Cameron in 1916. The people who he knew as his parents were legal guardians assigned to him by government officials. He also had a biological brother named Duncan who he hadn't seen since he suppressed his memories. He says that when his memories came back, he discovered that the Philadelphia experiment was real and he was a part of it. He says he and his brother enlisted in the project during World War II and everything started in 1931. When the tests were carried out in 1943, he says that he and his brother were there. Al says that a group of scientists was working on hiding U.S. ships from Nazi U-boats. They were John Hutchison, John Van Neumann, and Nikola Tesla. By 1940, they did have some success with hiding smaller vessels, and three years later, they worked to hide the USS Eldridge, a much larger vessel. According to Al, on July 22nd, there was a serious problem. He says the ship did disappear, but after 15 minutes of invisibility, the people on the ship were suffering from nausea and delirium. John Van Neumann wanted more time to run tests, but the Navy insisted that they go ahead in just a month. Al and his brother were on board again. This time, Al and his brother were not on board when the ship came back into view. The two brothers knew something was wrong, and they jumped overboard. When they hit the shore, they weren't in Philadelphia, and it wasn't 1943. They were on the shore of Montauk, New York. It was 1983. According to Al, when they got to the shore, they were swarmed by helicopters and guards. They were taken to an underground facility, and there they were introduced to John Van Neumann, who had aged 40 years. Al claims that he and Duncan had traveled in time. John Van Neumann explained that the Eldridge was stuck inside a hyperspace bubble. If it continued to grow, it would destroy the Earth. He told the men the only way to stop it would be to return to the ship and destroy the onboard equipment, and he needed Al and Duncan to do that. The men went through time again, and they used axes to destroy the generators on the ship. It began to stabilize and the rift in time began to close. The USS Eldridge returned to 1943. After destroying the generator, Al lost consciousness. When he woke up, he and his brother were in the hospital. But it wasn't 1943, nor was it 1983. He says that he was in the year 2137. While traveling through time, Al says that he and Duncan suffered from radiation burns and they were being treated. They were in the future hospital for six weeks and during that time they learned a lot. The doctors weren't using gauze and medication to treat their wounds. Instead, they used ultra-advanced light and vibration energy to treat the patients. On TV, only history, geography, and new channels were broadcast. He says that there were no sitcoms or soap operas. After watching TV, he learned the U.S. geography had also changed. 
Between 2000 and 2025, he says the U.S. lost part of its landmass. Florida was gone, and Atlanta was where Florida used to be. Al says that in the future, the world is under military rule, and the U.S. was no longer a nation. The population on Earth had gone from 7.7 .7 billion to only 300 million. He claimed that nuclear war was the cause. Al says that when he was healed, he tried to get back to his time, but this time he traveled to 2749. Nuclear war had devastated the Earth by this time again, and society rebuilt itself into a utopia. Al says mankind had mastered the mechanics of anti-gravity, and artificial intelligence took over jobs, so people didn't need to worry about money or work. Since money had no value, there was no war. Al found himself back in 1983 again, but his brother had side effects. He aged quickly and died. Al asked his parents to have another child and give him Duncan's memories and thoughts. Using Duncan's psychic abilities, they sent Al back. They first deleted his memories and sent him back to 1927 with a new name. Many conspiracy theorists actually believe Al, many others don't. He insists he did travel in time. We don't know if his stories are true, but in five years we will know if it's for real. After all, sometime between the year 2020 and 2025, Florida is supposed to disappear. So in a little over five years, we'll see if he's right. What do you think? Tell us in the comments and subscribe for more.